Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and another Genre Makers. Today, well, you're just gonna have to pardon me a little bit while I indulge myself, because today we're gonna talk about a genre that I've always loved, even if I'm not very good at them, and that's fighting games. Now, these have been around for a very long time in one form or another, from the earliest being roughly heavyweight champ, they came out in 1976, all the way to games like Karate Champ that had 24 moves that could be executed via the dual analog stick system that was worked into the main controls. However, none of these games came out that put everything together quite the same way as the game we're going to talk about today, and that's Street Fighter 2. What made this game so popular? What elements did it pull in that were new? How did it shape the future moving forward? Well, get ready to select your character and let's find out. Street Fighter 2 was the follow-up to the less than well-received original game. The first one, well, let's say it was different with cabinets often only having buttons that would vary attack strength based on how hard they were hit. This made for attacks not always coming out consistently in the manner that you wanted them to. On top of that, people were actually talking about bloodying up their hands by having to almost literally punch the pad to get some of the harder attacks to work. Eventually, this would shift to a six button setup that we now know is pretty much common with most fighters today. On top of that, the timing on the game had to be exceptionally precise. You see, when you wanted to input a special move, the moment you rolled from down to right to say do a fireball, you had to hit the punch button exactly as you pressed right. This often left players frustrated and also made it so the game didn't do well due to the frustration and the not being able to consistently get the button you wanted. However, the overall responses led Capcom to think that there was promise with the IP. And so they set up a new team to move forward with work on a sequel, one destined to send ripples throughout history as an influence not only in fighting games, but in competitive games as a whole. You see, Street Fighter 2 was special in the sense that it did a few unique things. First off, each character had their own stage that was themed loosely after their country of origin. This gave the player a sense of actually traveling there to fight that particular fighter, with the in-flight map reinforcing that thought process. On top of all this, Yoko Shimura, who made all the music for the game, set up themes for each one of the characters, but did it in an interesting way. You see, what she would do is certain members of the team would be assigned to a character for design, working with each other for overall balance. Instead of making the music and saying, this is for Kyle, she would walk in and play the themes for the group. More often than not, one of the designers would speak and say something like, I like this one a lot. I'm taking this one for my character. This wasn't by accident, but intentional on her part, as it gave the character designers even more involvement in the theme and stage design for their characters. On top of this, they also widened the gap for inputs on special moves. What this meant was players had more time to input the moves, making them more accessible. Ironically enough, this actually left enough of a gap for players to enter in other moves before the input was finished. What happened in this case was, you could actually do things like a low medium kick into a hurricane kick or a punch into a fireball before the other player could input another command. This actually gave rise to the combo system that we know today. They also wanted to encourage players to fight each other from the very beginning. This was something that wasn't often done in arcade games at the time, a lot of them were like Space Invaders where it was a single player experience, with others being more turn based between players. In this game, you could drop your money in and directly challenge someone to a fight. This led to a quick rise in the United States in competitive play between players, but it was actually slower to be adopted in Japan and would take longer for them to join in this particular arena of fun. Now this was one of the first times that players had eagerly jumped in to challenge each other in quite the same way giving rise to tournaments and competitive gaming scenes all over, and was especially one of the reasons that we had the versus scene we have today. Other developers like Oenya Christopher Moimoto, the designer of Arc System Works projects such as Guilty Gear and Blaze Blue, well, he was pulled into it based off the individual characters all having their unique style and feel, giving him a chance to choose who he wanted that would express him as a person more. Mike Zymont, the designer of Skullgirls, was cited as such. Game designer in me notes that it was a huge leap forward in terms of presentation. It was an equally large advance in terms of game design. 
and laid the foundation for many of the concepts that you'll find in nearly every fighting game from then on. He's right, of course. As impressive as it looked and felt, the balance across the styles and the counterplay between them actually set a new level of standard, ushering in games like Mortal Kombat, Killer Instinct, Blaze Blue, Guilty Gear, and a whole lot more. Today, happily enough, we've had a resurgence of these kinds of games, again with developers throwing design styles and elements, all hoping to catch that spark, that magic that started it all coming together in Street Fighter 2. Players compete online from around the world and meet in person in huge tournaments each year, not only to test their skill, but to earn renown and prize money for their skill at the game. In part, planting the seeds for other competitive venues and different genres to take root and flourish as well. However, what do you guys think of this one? Do you, any of you ever play fighting games, and if so, which ones are your favorites? Do you think Street Fighter had this big of an influence in the larger competitive scene? Heck, what's your favorite Street Fighter character? Let me know in the comments. While you're there, if you don't mind, please give this video a like. And if you find more of my content you like, possibly one of the videos showing now, consider following the channel. That actually helps me out a ton. Till we meet again, though, thank you so much for spending part of your day with me and making it this far in the video. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and happy gaming!